Good morning, and welcome to Mount Zion. If this is your first time with us, we're glad that you're here. My name is Steve Humphrey, and I am the pastor. I'd like to, real quick, um, give you guys a heads up. If any of you are friends with people who are trying to listen to us on Zoom this morning, we sent out a new Zoom meeting ID number. Um, I'm going to say it was around Monday or Tuesday, but apparently the number never got updated in the bulletin this week. So if those folks at home who don't have internet are trying to call in on their phones right now, if they're using the one in the bulletin, it's wrong. So if you could um, check the, um, make sure that they get the um, correct number from the email that was sent out Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, that would really help those folks out. Appreciate it. Anyway. Moving on, if you have any prayer concerns you would like for us to lift up during the joys and concerns time this morning, you can text those to me directly at 443-866-2432. That's 443-866-2432. If you would like to join any of our upcoming Zoom classes or our small groups, we've got a number of things that will be starting up again in the near future, so you can just shoot us an email this week at mountzionmech.org, that's M-T-Z-I-O-N-M-E-C-H dot O-R-G, and we'll get you the information you need to join the um, Bible studies when they start. And I know that one of the questions that people have been asking a lot lately is, when are we going to go back to normal worship? Of course, the question is not, when are we going to reopen? The church never closed because the church isn't a building, the church is a people. But when are we going to go back to normal worship again? Well, let me start by saying that this virtual worship, it is my intention that it will continue forever. Um, this will be our new web presence, but we will, of course, begin worshiping indoors again eventually as well. As in that survey, we'll be asking you questions um, like it'll give you several scenarios of different ways we could worship outdoors, and it will say, it will be asking you, would you be likely to attend worship under these circumstances? And um, that'll help guide us in knowing how many people to prepare for, prepare for and what kind of worship scenarios we should be preparing. When you receive that email, please return it to us as soon as possible. Now, uh, with that, Please join with me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord, for God is great indeed. Let us sing praises for God's glorious works. We give glory, honor, and thanksgiving to the Lord, who makes and sustains all things. Amen. Hello, I'm Rebecca Humphrey, and um, the, our first hymn this morning is uh, number 569 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We have a story to tell to the nations. Oh 
me now, please. O oh God, your word gives us counsel for our understanding. Enable us to receive it today. In the name of your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 1 through 19. Listen for the word of the Lord. In that day, the song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation, its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. He hum high, he lays the lofty city low, he levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. You, the upright one, make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the ways of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgment comes upon the earth, the people of the world will learn righteousness. But when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in the land of uprightness, they go on doing evil and do not regard the majesty of the Lord. Lord, your hand is lifted high, but they do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be put to shame. Let the fire reserved for your enemies consume them. Lord, you established peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Lord, our God, other lords besides you have ruled over us, but your name alone do we honor. They are now dead. They live no more. Their spirits do not rise. You punished them and brought them to ruin. You wiped out all memory of them. You have enlarged the nation, Lord. You have enlarged the nation. You have gained glory for yourself. You have extended all the borders of the land. Lord, they came to you in their distress. When you disciplined them, they could barely whisper a prayer. As a pregnant woman about to give birth writhes and cries out in her pain, so were we in your presence, Lord. We were with child. We writhed in labor, but we gave birth to wind. We have not brought salvation to the earth, but the people of the world have not come to life. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you alone are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, my friends, tomorrow is Memorial Day, the day that we traditionally honor the memories of the sacrifices of those men and women who've died serving in the military. I chose Isaiah 26 this morning because it's the scripture that is recommended by the American Bible Society for Memorial Day weekend. And Isaiah 26 says three important things. For one, it says that at the end of time as we know it, on the last day, the day of the Lord, God's people will be resurrected into a new life. But it also says that on that day, the nations will be judged, and only the righteous nations will be a part of the kingdom of God. It also says that when peace reigns over the land, we must remember that it is a gift from God and not our own accomplishment. So today, we don't just thank 
these departed loved ones who have made all these sacrifices for us. We also thank God for giving those people to us. But I thought I'd do something a little bit different this year. And please forgive me if I get a little bit passionate about this morning, but it's something that I feel strongly about. It's something that I feel called by God to say. In the first half of the 20th century, our nation dealt with, it seems, one crisis after another. There was the Spanish flu pandemic, there was World War I, there was the Great Depression, there was World War II, and during all of those things, and especially during the, the two world wars, it wasn't just the men on the front lines who made sacrifices. The people back home were making sacrifices as well. It was called the home front, and without it, we would not have won the war. This morning, I want to honor all of those sacrifices as well. My grandfather reported to Fort Hollibird just a couple of days after his wedding. At the wedding, though, he had been drafted. His brothers had intercepted his draft notice and wouldn't give it to him until after the ceremony was over with. They were afraid that he would back out if he knew that he had been called to duty. Nine months later, my grandmother gave birth to twin boys, twin boys that my grandfather wouldn't see until they were almost two. And he didn't get a year while he was in the Pacific Arena. During those two years, she sacrificed. So this week I asked myself, how have Americans responded during our nation's darkest hours? Becky, if you could start the um, slideshow there. During the Spanish flu pandemic, churches didn't just shut down. They helped out in any way that they could. In fact, there was a church in the Pittsburgh area, Calvary Episcopal. They actually turned over their fellowship hall to the army and converted it into a field hospital. During World War II, the Office of Civil Defense trained 10 million volunteers stateside to do all kinds of things. They were trained to help put out fires, to assist the first responders. In the event of a chemical weapon attack, they had millions of people who were trained to decontaminate areas. They were trained to provide first aid. Of course, yeah, we're short of toilet paper and paper towels right now, but during World War II, everything was rationed. People had to wait in line, long lines, for basic items like sugar. Gasoline was rationed. Most people were in the A ration allotment, and they had to get by on three or four gallons of gasoline per week. Women took a pledge called the Home Front Pledge. These were homemakers, and the pledge was that they would never buy anything without a ration coupon. And when they bought something, they would never pay above the price for preferential treatment. And yes, those prices were set by the federal government. Price controls were put in effect during the war. Public schools started gardens on their fields. The children of the schools tended those gardens because food was in such short supply, they needed to put every piece of land in the service that they could. During the summer months, high school kids volunteered to work for free on farms across the country was called the Crop Corps. Military wives took jobs to support the war effort, making munitions and tanks and all kinds of things. And these were women who were raising children while their husbands were off fighting the war. And they were working, and there were no child care centers as we knew it in those days. People made do. On D-Day, houses of worship were open for prayer 24 hours. Why do I bring these things up now? Well, folks, we got through these crises because our nation pulled together. Every single American was focused on doing their part. Everybody made tremendous sacrifices. The entire nation mobilized and rallied around a single cause. And our nation's leaders did their jobs and provided the leadership we needed to accomplish our common objective. 
Of course, I don't remember any of this. I was born in 1970 at the height of the Vietnam War. During my lifetime, and this is going to sound extreme, and my wife and I debated this a little bit, I would say that I have never seen our nation's leaders pull together for a common cause. After September 11, they said they would, but really, they did not. Every national crisis we have had, and this one is no different, the leaders of both parties have been primarily concerned about how they can use that crisis to their own advantage. If they were half as concerned about actually solving the crises, we would be in a very different situation today. But the point is, brothers and sisters, we can't count on them. They're not going to help us. It's up to us. If this nation is to survive this crisis, and this is an existential level threat, it will be because you, the people of this country, and the Christian community in particular, have risen to the occasion and become the uniting force that we need so desperately right now. You must be the uniters of our nation. No more fighting, no more political debates, no more protests, no more ignoring safety guidelines, no more callous disregard for people who have lost their livelihoods, no more assuming that this will all just blow over and taking for granted that the economy will recover just like that. We've got to work together to make these things happen. You've probably all heard the famous part of FDR's inaugural speech. Let me refresh you. He said, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. That wasn't a war. People are angry. The root of anger is always fear. Nameless, unreasoning terror. The opposite of fear is hope. Whatever challenges you're facing right now because of this pandemic, assume that there is a solution. Find the solution. Be creative. God will not give us a task that he will not help us accomplish. But above all, remember that your fellow Americans are not the enemy. People are not the enemy. The virus is the enemy. The economic problems, that's the enemy. If we all work together and have each other's backs, we will get through this. In John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And later on in John, he said, greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his brothers. On the day of the Lord, when the nations are judged, will God look at America and say, in this nation, the people truly loved one another? Well, folks, that all depends on us. Let us pray. Living God, giver of life, hear us as we pray, saying, pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of life. We pray for St. Mary's County. Give us a vision of the common good, not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. We pray for our loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and our joy may be complete. 
and the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray so that the world may come to know the gift of life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, those of you listening on Zoom will not hear what we're about to do because it's being fed through the system in a different way. Don't do it just yet, Becky. <laughs> um, this week, our choir is attempting its first virtual anthem, which means that the parts you're about to hear were not recorded together in a group. Each part was laid down individually and mixed with a piano track, and if all works well, you will hear our choir bringing you an anthem this morning, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. that worked. <laughs> Otherwise, you've all been listening to dead silence for the past three minutes, and you know, but I don't, so I'll find out later. It is time for us to share our joys and our concerns. Let me check now and see if anything has been sent in via text message. And I do have some stuff. Uh, apparently, YouTube dropped off, um, which would explain why we just got a message a second ago saying reconnection was successful. So if you were watching on YouTube and now you're switched over to Facebook, um, it should be back again. Ooh, that's a problem because I get the um, audio feed from YouTube every week, so there's going to be a problem with that. Oops. Um, let me see what else we've got here. Oh, here is a joy. Um, the, um, the Haineses tell us that this week at April's Pools, they served their 1,000th meal. These are the, the lunches that are being passed out to kids. Um, you know, a lot of kids rely on school lunches during the school year, the school lunch program, and that's not happening right now, so they've been passing out lunches uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, continued prayers for Tom Keller, still having vision problems, and he apparently hurt his foot, and it's not healing as quickly as he would hope. So we'll keep... Um, them in our prayers, and I have it has been confirmed that YouTube is in fact working again. So, and if, if any of you are hoping to get back to YouTube, because I know it's a little bit easier to watch that way, you can get back to that now. All right, let me get back over to Zoom here. Zoom is still working. Hopefully, we've got folks on there. So, let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for Tom this morning. We pray for healing for him. We pray for Judy, for healing for her. We pray for Kathy Kennedy, who moved last week. We pray for all of the folks in the congregation who are either healing or grieving right now. We pray for all of the, we lift up to you, Lord, in community, all of the prayers that we have not heard from each other, all the prayers that are kept silently in our hearts, that we don't share with even our closest family or friends sometimes, but Lord, you hear them all. 
but we put all of our voices together behind them as we pray as your son our lord taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we appreciate the support that you have been faithful in providing for the ministries of the church. Please continue to give either online through PayPal, you can find that information on our website, or to continue to, to mail in those mailings, mail in those, those offerings. We truly appreciate that. We also appreciate all the different things people are doing behind the scenes to keep the ministry going. I certainly appreciate all of the work the choir did this week. Um, recording tracks is something that was new to all of them, and, uh, and they um, spent a lot of time, a lot more time doing that than the three minutes that you just heard. So um, we certainly appreciate everything that everybody is doing behind the scenes to keep the church going, to keep the ministries going, to keep all of our programs to the community going, because everything that we have, whether it's our blood, sweat, and tears, or money, is we take care of it as stewards for what God has given us. God is ever faithful and has blessed us with so much. So it is with grateful hearts that we offer back to God what we have with love and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious God, we offer you these gifts. Multiply them that they might help you build your kingdom on earth and be of service to the body of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to have our closing hymn. Our last hymn is America, uh, number 697 in the Methodist hymnal. <clears throat> The Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. Let us follow Christ's example and give our all to God and one another. May the knowledge and love of the one who knit the earth together 
rest with you and give you strength to help others for the glory of God. Amen.